Hello and welcome fellow Wasteland survivors. I'm Dean. Thanks for stopping in, hanging out with me. I hope you guys and gals are all doing great today. Well, we're back out at Hangman's Alley. And in today's video, we're going to build this little structure above and around the workbench. What's really nice about doing this is it helps contain all the items that we're collecting while we're playing the game. For instance, all those containers right there, they've got legendaries in them, collectibles, items I might want to sell, etc. As we build this build today, you'll see how we can line this up extremely well and nice to the pre-existing building that's already here. Also, quite a few of these objects will actually snap into and through these columns and walls. Also, at the start of the video, we're going to take a look at how we put these chem boxes into the fridge that's already here at Hangman's Alley, since we don't have one of those to build in our work menu, unless you've got mods, and we don't. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and get this video started. <laughs> figured out how we actually did this but just in case you're not familiar with this process we're gonna go over it real quick first of all we're using a metal post sinking it into the ground and doing group select to help us lift the chem box up to the height that we need it to be to fit on these shelves now there is one thing to keep in mind here ladies and gentlemen that this is a static object that's already found here at hangman's alley we actually can't create this in our work menu unless you're using mods. So if you've already scrapped this fridge, then you're not going to be able to do it unless you're using some mods. Now what I like about this fridge is even though it's static, the door still opens and closes, which gives it a really cool look and feel for keeping our items in these containers. And you can keep your food, nuka colas whatever you want here, and it'll help keep it cold, I think. Okay, let's get our build started. First thing that I've done is place this shack stairwell up and then snapped a metal prefab to it. The reason that we've done that is because a lot of these objects will not sink very far into the ground here at Hangman's Alley. So getting it up as high as we can right off the bat is going to be extremely useful. Now we'll bring this metal post over and we'll place it somewhere in the center of the metal prefab. We're going to lift the post up a little bit to make sure that we can group select the metal post and the prefab together. Now because these items don't go into the ground very well, we're going to use this shack foundation. They do sink into the ground extremely well and far. So we'll bring that over, we'll put it up in front of our metal post, now we can group select the shack foundation and lift it all up together. Now if we wouldn't have done this, we would have only been able to have lifted it up about one foot at a time. Therefore we would have been group selecting with the concrete pillar or the concrete little uh, post that we have here about 20 times to get it up as high as we need. So now that we've got it up about where we need it to be, we'll bring this concrete pillar over, place it beside the metal post, and now we can group select everything all together. Once you have it group selected, push it back as far as you can and then bring it down. This will allow us to see it as we're inserting it into our build. Now there's a reason why we put the metal post in the middle of the metal prefab and that is because that roof above the workbench actually has no registration. If you've actually walked on top of that you'll fall through it because it doesn't register as any kind of floor there. 
So this makes it extremely easy to bring our build over and put it in where we want to without any collision issues. Now once we've got it lined up where we think that we like it, we can go ahead and place it down and then check it out. Actually, we've got it a little too far back and we want it more up in front of the part of that ceiling than behind it. So because we have no other build around it, we can actually group select it again from this position and move it forward or wherever we'd like. Now we need it to stick out there a little bit because we've got walls to go up in front of it and they will collide with the top of that ceiling. All right, now the next thing that we'll want to do is put up a half a barn floor and then a full floor. This gets us to the extreme edge of our metal prefab. Now we'll take a half a wall, put that up, and then now we can put a full wall down below it. Once we've done this, we can take the half a wall out, click on the full wall, and it drops straight down to the ground. Now there's a couple of reasons why we did this. First of all, it'll align everything up and match with the prefab. Second of all, once we put another wall in here, we can snap our roll-up garage door onto the front of that. And as you can see, the wall snapped right through the pre-existing concrete pillar without any problem whatsoever. So now all we have to do is grab our roll-up metal door and snap that onto the front of it. And everything is lined up pretty nice. But the garage door is still a little bit above the ground, a little more than I like. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this wall out, then we'll click on the garage door, let it drop down a little more, and now everything will be nice and tight. And even though it's down this low, we can still snap a wall on if we choose to. Now we want to put a door there, but we're going to have to do a little bit of work to get that door in because it's like half the walkway of the door is kind of halfway in the pillar and we don't want that. So now we'll snap a couple of half of walls onto the top of our roll-up garage door and that looks pretty good. And it's nice and tight. Yeah, I like that. All right, now for the sides. We could actually snap full walls in here if we wanted to. But, on this side, we don't really need it. So I've chosen to use these little corner portion pieces. I really don't know what they are. They're not even a half a wall. And then I've snapped one in, and we'll group select a second one, bring it over, and place it in and line it up the best we can. Now, they are a little bit junky, and you might not like that, and you might choose to use an actual regular wall. That's entirely up to you what you'd like to do. All right, let's go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. Now, the difference of what I'm doing here is just to show you that it doesn't matter if you want to group select the bottom or the top piece to place it in. It still works exactly the same way. But because we're group selecting and putting the top one in, we're actually using a conduit with our pillar to get it up there and keep us away from anything and any collision issues. Now, there's a reason why we put these shorter pieces in up to that concrete pillar of the pre-existing build. And that is because we want to put a door in. And if we would have snapped a full wall in, it offsets our door. So by doing it like that, we actually fill up both gaps and get our door in nice and straight and even. So we've taken our door frame, we've snapped a half a wall to the top of it, group selected it, brought it over, line it up, place it in. It's that simple and easy, ladies and gentlemen. And now we've got a cool little doorway that we can walk in, or we can go ahead and use the roll up garage door if we choose to. All right, now at this point we've pretty much got everything in that we're going to be building, but we do have a little bit of a gap between the top of our wall that's above our roll-up garage door and the bottom of our metal prefab. Well, the prefab is going to be our living quarters, so we're going to need a walkway to be able to get into it. 
and that'll make a pretty cool awning over top of the garage door as well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make our walkway two floors thick to help cover up that gap between the two objects. And we're going to use an old trick that we've seen a bazillion times. A uh, bazillion? Is that even a word? Well, okay. A whole bunch of times. And we'll just use these two concrete curved walls to do it. By placing them in like this, we can actually drop our floor down one floor thickness at a time. And by doing that, we'll be able to make our walkway two floors thick. And now, all we have to do is just go ahead and snap all the other pieces in. And I think we'll even use the metal curved uh, floors on the edges to give it a pretty cool look for the sides. Well, I think we got most of our build up around the workbench, including our sleeping quarters, which are up above. Now, what's really nice about doing this is all of this is contained into a small area, and the rest of Hangman's Alley is still wide open to us and easy to move around. Now, believe it or not, the build that we saw in today's video really only took about 30 minutes to do. So if you're thinking about doing something like this, don't think it's going to be an all-day job. There are a lot of ideas that you can create using today's tips and tricks. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope I see you on the next video where we start working on some of these other things behind this really useless non-scrappable building. I've built a Nuka-Cola mixing station on the first floor. I've added in an elevator, believe it or not. And on our second floor, I've created a gaming room. This is where I'll keep all my magazines and video games, and I'll play them there on that computer if I want to. Um, on our third floor, it's not useless either. Even though half of this is out of the build area, or the height, we were actually still able to build quite a few things in here. And we'll see that all on the next video. And this is where I'm going to keep my bobbleheads as I collect them. Alright everybody, thank you all very much for coming, hanging out with me today. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. And just like always everyone, please, until next time, stay safe and peace.